Just to kind of highlight one thing, this is an article we saw here. Um, mitochondria and microbiota dysfunction with post-viral issues. You can see how the gut microbiome also plays a certain role. And, and why is that? Well, I think because 80% of the immune system is in the gut. And so if you have a pathogenic or dysbiotic microbiome, it's going to affect toxins being produced, right? It's going to put you right here in a hyper-inflammatory state, right? We already have a lot more cytokines being produced if we have an illness. And so we have to be able to calm down our immune system's inflammation to what's happening from an immune stress standpoint. And so the microbiome plays a big role, iron dysregulation, reactive oxygen species, right? And so vitamin C plays a major role here. Vitamin, uh, glutathione plays a major role there as well. Yeah, a couple more about, sentences down yeah. right there. Look at that one. The mitochondrial, the heightened inflammatory oxidative state may lead to mitochondrial dysfunction. And so this is what we're seeing on paper. We're seeing this in the stool test. We're seeing this in the organic acid test, this issue with the gut and with the mitochondria. Yeah, it talks about platelet damage too, which is important because what do platelets do? Those are your clotting factors. And so if we can have increased coagulation cascades, that just means more clotting, right? And you can see more clotting events, more thrombosis. Is, that's a blood clot, right? And so you can see furthermore, mitochondrial oxidative stress may, may contribute to microbiota dysbiosis altering coagulation and fueling inflammatory oxidative response leading to vicious cycles of events. So this is really important. And so things that we can do to be on top of the, the fatigue is going to be the same things that we can do to help mitigate a lot of the inflammation. That's going to be keeping our blood sugar in check, adding in some of these additional B vitamins, um, adding in anti-inflammatory anticoagulants. What, what do those look like? That could be ginger. That could be uh, curcumin, which have anti-inflammatory and anticoagulation effects. That could be adding some extra cod liver oil that has more vitamin A in it, which is a really powerful antioxidant, but it also has natural blood thinning aspects because of the extra omega-3s in there. So there's different things that we can do to really help reduce a lot of that inflammation. Any, any comments on that, Evan? Yeah. And then on the more intense side of supporting hypercoagulability, lumbrokinase is going to be your most yep. powerful. That's your earthworm based enzyme, which is just a cool, cool thing. Uh, natto, uh, there's also serapeptidase. So there are other enzymes that you can use. And I personally take those. I take uh, lumbrokinase one per day, just ongoing. And it's been very helpful. I also did a podcast with Dr. Thomas Levy all about vi vitamin C IV, and he's got some dark field microscopy photos of people that were having blood clotting issues, and the vitamin C along with ozone and IV was like a game changer. And vitamin C can help energy too, so I don't want to get too in deep in the rabbit hole of blood clots, but we'll just say that the, the vitamin C is helpful for energy also. Mm -hmm. 100%.